Hello, church. Hola. Aloha. Mabuhay. Ni hao. Chao. Anyong haseo. This is the first Sunday in the season of Lent, and that's the season where we spend our time in fasting and penitence. That's the 40 days that we remember and anticipate the journey to the cross and to the glorious Easter morning. Just a few reminders. Um, if you're carrying your cell phones with you or mobile tablets, kindly place them on silent mode. Like I always say, if we hear them ringing during the worship, next Sunday you will preach. Or today you will offer the music. You can dance, sing, or whatever. You know. If you have prayer requests or praises you want lifted up, kindly fill up the pink cards if you're here in the sanctuary. Um, it's better if you print them, or if you write them in Korean, that's fine. You know, the pastor will like it. Uh, or if you are tuning in on Facebook Live or YouTube, you can put your prayer requests or praises in the comment section. We'll get them to the pastor in time. Remember, we are already in the ninth week of our 14-week reading of the New Testament. So um, it's okay if you missed a few days or if you missed a few weeks, just join us starting this week. If you're starting only this week, join us in the reading. Also, let me remind you of the tragedy in Turkey and Syria because of the earthquake is still ongoing. And we know that the, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, UMCOR or UMCOR, is right there working to provide relief. So if you have, if you are so moved, um, you can write checks to Torrance First United Methodist Church. On the memo section, just write UMCOR earthquake. And you can use their special UMCOR envelopes in the lobby. Or if you want to use the green, the regular giving envelope, you can use that, just write UMCOR earthquake on the outside, as well as on the memo of your check. Like I said, today is the first Sunday in Lent, and um, today our pastor is starting a sermon series for today and the whole month of March based on the languages of apology. And his sermon today is about, I am sorry. Now, in American Sign Language, you know how to do that? I am sorry is like that. So, um, that's the first Sunday, and then there will be four Sundays in March that the pastor will develop for us the five, la the five languages of apology. And with that, the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. And to prepare ourselves for worship, let us join together in the call to worship. Welcome, pilgrims, on the way to the cross. For those who feel Christ near, for those who feel as far from Christ as the desert is from the ocean. For all of us who stumble and fall in our silence, indifference, and lack of generosity. Pilgrims on the way, come, let us worship God. We come to worship God as we learn to live inside out. Amen and rise if you are able to join in the opening hymn.
Oh, children's police coming out. Woo. How are you doing? Good? It's cold, isn't it? No, it's not? Okay. Hey, come in. Hey. You know, I'm so glad that you guys really enjoyed come to church. That's my like a highly, highlight of my children's moment two Sundays ago. You know, still, uh, you know, your response really lingering my heart because this is what I really want you to like uh, hold on going to church worship and learn about God and Bible is the really important and you're taking really uh, more positive way so I really appreciate all of you okay okay you still like to come to church right yeah. uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Last Wednesday was what was it? Ash Wednesday. We talked about last Sunday that what is the meaning of the Ash Wednesday? What is the meaning of Ash Wednesday? Anyone? Remembering God and our brokenness, something that we didn't uh, do it right, and we confess and repent that. We did this right, uh, wrong, and then we ask God for forgiveness. That's the special time that we put ash on the forehead because of the you know, Israel culture that repentance, the sign of the putting ashes on the forehead is the sign of repentance. So that's what we, as we start the Lenten season, that uh, we are putting ashes in remembrance our God's forgiveness, okay? What is this? A hammer. Hammer! <laughs> Something that judges you, right? Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> okay. Guilty, okay. I mean, this the gravel, it's called gravel, is reminded that, that, you know, the law and judge, like something, do it right or wrong to represent these gravels. And we have a great, like our God as a great judge. What's, what's that mean? What's that mean, Philip? Huh? Uh huh. Our God is a judge. That you're guilty. That's our God. Uh, it would be nicer, okay. <laughs> our God is a judge, that's a right. That's a right statement, but our God is different kind of judge. In a judge, real judge in, uh, in our uh, culture is, you know, make, you know, ba basically punish. If you did wrong, then you punish and make a certain level of judgment on the person who did wrong, right? But our God is not that. Uh, Book of Isaiah says this. Can you repeat after me? For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our ruler. The Lord is our king. Right? And then this, uh, the important statements follow. He will save us. He will save us. Okay, louder, please. He will save us. Even though our God is a judge, our God is a ruler, our God is a king, it's something like a different kind of judge that is not pun trying to punish us. He will save us. That's our God. That's our God that we remember, and that's our God that we hold on to, right? As we start this Lenten season, think about 
God, our God who saved us. Think about our Lord Jesus Christ who came to us to save us. That's amazing God, okay? When you think about this gray wall, you think about punishment and all that, but our God is not. Our God is loving God who saves us, okay? Let's remember that. Okay, let's, 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 let us pray. God, our God, we're so glad that you came to us to save us. Help us, God, to hold on the love that you showed to us through the cross. God, as we going into this Lenten season, bless our children, help them to find the right way Bless our children with the Holy Spirit so that uh, they can find you throughout this uh, journey of Lenten season. Thank you, God, for all the blessings that you pour out upon our children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's go back to your classroom. Thank you. Hello, church. It's cold, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's cold. Yeah, I became Californian, so. Yeah. Uh, because of we are church, uh, times like this, like a cold weather, we need to look for each other, take care of each other. So make a phone call f- you know, to your uh, neighbors and friends, and if they are okay with it, okay? So, I mean, even though we are kind of not in good condition, but we are holding each other as a church, so, okay? Thank you for coming this Saturday for our outreach lunch. Uh, we had a, uh, not many as before, but uh, uh, we are able to welcome them and then bring them inside because of the cold weather outside. So that was really nice. And we can provide coffee and a French room. Uh, that was really good. But we gave out all the food that we prepared. So uh, we are so grateful for that too. And we thank you for all the, your help and support for the outreach lunch. Mm. Cleaning out, cleaning out party, church work party. This Saturday we will clean out a uh, basement. There's uh, some uh, stuff that we need to carry out. So if you have muscle, <laughs> and Please join us on Saturday morning, 9 o'clock through 12. Uh, so we need your help. So please come to this Saturday. Uh, once we clean out, and then we're going to put it, all the stuff back in the uh, cabinets. So that's the next step. But we need to clean out first. So we need your help this Saturday, uh, nine, uh, 9 o'clock. And uh, we have a... Uh, like a uh, food available Saturday? Okay. Anyway, uh, whether it's a food or not, uh, you can come and then join us. <laughs> okay. And I'm glad that our UMW is back on track. Uh, March 18, uh, 1 o'clock, we'll have a circle starting. So this is it's really hard when, once we stop for a while and then we back on, it's really hard. But uh, that's why we need your, a lot of support from you. So if you, uh, UMW, uh, please come Saturday, March 18, at one o'clock. Okay. And uh, did I miss any announcement? Oh, Leah.
Good morning. Yeah, we can do better than that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry, it wasn't you. It just was, I, anyway. Good morning. Um, you know, not too long ago, the schools celebrated the 100th day of school. It didn't happen at the same time because Torrance and LA Unified have different start times, but it was fun to be on campus and look to see what the children thought they might look like if they lived to be 100, to have them line up 100 items and see how long it went or how tall it went. Um, but few of us ever get to experience if we actually do get to turn 100. And something that is unique about this church building is that it is. It's 100 years old. And so it, what better way to um, honor that than with a celebration? And so this May, we are going to celebrate in a much grander scale than we did last October, the 100th birthday of our church building. And so we have some really nice things planned, not only during worship, but for afterwards during our social hour. Um, we have two uh, singing groups and uh, the Torrance High uh, Music Department will be invited to participate in our afternoon festivities as well. We would like to be able to provide a nice lunch for those of us that are able to attend that day but we can't do that by ourselves. And so we um, would like to invite you to provide some financial support for that event if you are so inclined. If you would like to do that for us, um, with us uh, for this May, we invite you to um, put whatever you would like to donate toward that effort into an envelope and on the memo line uh, add 100th day or 100th year celebration or centennial celebration. You can also do that through our on online giving portal that you can access through the church website. But we really, really do want to make this a meaningful uh, celebration. We've invited not only our former pastors who are still with us, um, but uh, some dignitaries from our district and our conference as well. So please, 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 um, as you feel burdened on your heart to contribute, we invite you to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sorry, I forgot to complete your announcement. You know, after worship, let us all go to the social hall because we have the Staff Paris Relations Committee has prepared a cake and some pastries to celebrate the birthday of our good-looking Asian pastor. <laughs> I, I know some of you mistake him for a K-pop member, you know, but um, his birthday, he says, is on March 3. But he qualifies that because he says it's March 3 on the lunar calendar. But we did not know that then, okay? So even though it is not March 3 in the lunar calendar, March 3 is coming up, so we decided to hold a special celebration for him at the social hall. So after worship, let us all go to the social hall have some cake and some pastries prepared by Marshall, and we will enjoy his non-birthday. Uh, <laughs> but I warned him, I already figured out the lunar calendar, so I know when his birthday is coming this year and next year and the year after that. So. It's a secret. So. <laughs> okay, speaking of SPRC, maybe Ida, our new SPRC chair, well, brief announcement about Aluyasan of the uh, staff members. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, uh, so I was asked by Pastor Jacob to be the chair for this year's um, SPRC, so the Staff Parish Rel Relations Committee. Actually, I just received from our um, dear 
Marshall a full bag of uh, documents over there. It's a full bag of shopping bag that I have to review. But anyway, I would like to introduce to you uh, the uh, liaison or the members of the SPRC, uh, starting with Kuya Bill. Kuya Bill, can you come up here? Kuya Bill is a liaison for Pastor Jacob. So let's give him a, a big hand. I'd like to call on Kirby. Oh, Kirby is up in the uh, adult, uh, young youth, children's and youth. Yeah, yeah. youth. Okay, so can I call on... Um, Kirby is to Francis. Francis? Yeah, Kirby is the... Yeah, the okay. Uh, Kirby is the liaison for Francis Serrano, our youth, children's and youth director. Yeah. And then if I can call on Perry. Perry. Over there, Patty is uh, the liaison for our dear Joshua. All right. And then Lori, Lori Clausen over here. Hi, Lori. Say hi to Lori. She's the liaison for Claudia. And of course, Jennifer, who is out of town, is uh, the liaison for Hanny. Okay, so. Uh, we will be doing our job, our task, of course, and uh, with all sincerity, we'll be respecting our pastor, our staff, their families as well, to encourage, to strengthen, to nurture them, and to support them. Thank, Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. A uh, few prayer concerns we're going to lift up this morning. Valerie Mosik requests prayer for the, her cousin, Julie. Uh, Julie, who is a critical care at Torrance Memorial Medical Center. Doctor doesn't know what's, going, what's wrong. So that's the prayer uh, for Julie. Terry, Terry requested the continued prayer for the uh, uh, people affected by earthquake in Turkey and Syria, so, and uh, the Ukraine, uh, who are still suffering the violence of war. And Sherry uh, request that Sherry Pauli's cousin who fell and broke her hip on Friday, she had a surgery yesterday, pray for the healing and recovery. And uh, our Francis, education director's mom, Ro, right, Sierra? Francis, okay. Uh, her birthday is uh, when is it? Uh, she her birthday, her seventy sixth birthday. Oh wow! Happy birthday! And uh, happy birthday to Tiffany Nee. <coughs> Tiffany Nee. And then traveling mercies for sisters. Carmen, Arceli, eh, baby Tess, Ida, uh, for month trip to Philippines. So, uh, traveling mercy prayer for the traveling mercies. Any other prayer concerns? Okay. Huh? Joshua? Birthday? Joshua's birthday? Yeah, last Monday. Yeah. Happy birthday, Joshua. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And today's not my birthday, but we are celebrating. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let us pray. God, we are so grateful for your call to be your church. God, we are here as a church. Help us to find you, your will, upon our beloved church. God, we are living in this world so broken and so dark that need your light. Help us to be your light. Help us to bright up this world with the love that you showed to us. God, as we going on this journey of Lenten season, help us to follow you the right direction 
that you are heading. This morning, we lift up to you so many people dealing with very difficult situations. Spoken or unspoken, God knows, you know all the situations. God, we pray to you that you provide your true healing upon all these struggles. Whether it's uh, physical illnesses or financial trouble or many other situations we are dealing with. God, let them know that you are with them. God, we ask you to provide your true peace and comfort within all these struggles. Hold them with your, with your spirit so that they can find you, your way, your direction. God, this morning we gather here to worship you. Receive our prayers, receive our praises, receive our worship, and give us your true spirit upon us. Let us continue in prayer that, prayer that Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us trespasses, as we forgive those trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Amen. The ushers come forward, please. Uh, today's special offertory music is Paula Singers.
please join me in the prayer of dedication. Generous God, as we remember Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, we acknowledge the temptation that pursues so many of us to measure our worth, our power, and our security by what we have. As we offer these gifts to you this morning, we pray that you might deliver us from the temptation of building our lives around what belongs to us. Continually lead us to the conviction that what matters is that we belong to you. We pray in the name of our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Today's scripture comes from Matthew uh, chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. I was having a really hard time last night finishing off my sermon because my internet at Parsonage is really slow. So I might cut in half of the sermon today. <laughs> a little boy had uh, just returned home from an Ash Wednesday service, and a little girl next door asked him what the smudge was on his forehead. And this boy replied, it's Ash Wednesday. What's Ash Wednesday? She asked. And this boy said, it's when Christians began their diet. <laughs> you know, Ash Wednesday is not about giving up chocolate or stopping uh, drinking the coffee, it's not about, uh, for the Lent is not about it. It's about examining ourselves. It's examine ourselves. It's about journey through the resurrection. The Lenten season is a time to seek restoration, restoration. Psalm 51, verse 10 through 12 says this, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. And says this, restore to me the joy of your salvation and the sustain in me a willing spirit. The joy of salvation, the restore. That's we can do this Lenten season. And that can only happen when we repent. Joy of restoration comes only after we have regained pure heart and a steadfast spirit. As I prepared this sermon, I noticed that it's a really hard sermon because we're talking about repentance. If we, re if we really want to restore our relationship with God, we must reconcile with others. That's what Jesus said, right? Remember, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, 23, 24, so when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember, that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be re reconciled with your brother or sister, then come offer your gift. So in order to restore, reconcile with God, we need to first reconcile with others. Therefore, in this Lenten season, to seek restoration, we need to reconcile with our neighbors, including families, friends, and the enemies that we label. Genuine forgiveness and reconciliation are two-person transactions that are enabled by apology. Apology. Let me make myself clear. Some, however, teach forgiveness without apology. They quoted the word of Jesus. For if 
you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither your Father forgive your trespasses. In Jesus' time, a lot of men who cheated their wife, wives used this passage. So enforce this word to wives saying, you must forgive your husband or God will not forgive you. Ridiculous, isn't it? That kind of interpretation, that kind of interpretation of Jesus' teaching fails in the, the real meaning of forgiveness in the Bible. Because we as a Christians are instructed to forgive others in the same manner that God forgives us. How God forgives us. I'm not asking how God loves us, but the Bible says that God loves us as we are even before we repent of our sins. However, God forgives us when we honestly Repent of our sin. So we cannot just tell wives to forgive their husband while he is still continue in his wrongdoing. Because I cannot require those wives something more than God does to us. God is willing. God is always willing to forgive us. Do you you remember Jesus praying, even on the cross, saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus expressed his heart of compassion and desire to see his killers to be forgiven. That should be our desire and prayer. But remember, their forgiveness only came when they acknowledge the fact that they kill the Son of God. Acknowledge. Forgiveness without apology does not lead to reconciliation. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, famous uh, writer, says this, preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance is cheap grace, which amount to the justification of sin without the just justification of the repentant sinner. During this Lenten season, to lead you and myself to restore our relationship with God and others. Uh, From this Sunday, I would like to focus on the five languages of apology written by Gary Chipman and Jennifer. Chipman said that there are five languages of love And also, there are five languages of apology. We are living in this generation, my brothers and sisters in Christ, where it is really hard to find the true meaning of repentance and forgiveness. Even from the pulpit, it's really hard to hear the word repent these days. Self-righteousness, self-justification, we can easily find in this generation. They are common in this, the world that we are living in right now. Obviously, we have a broken relationship, but we don't know how to fix it. Obviously, we have this broken relationship with our neighbors, our enemies, 
but we don't know how to fix it, how to reconcile and restore those broken relationships. That's why something in us cry out for reconciliation. When we apologize, apologize, we accept responsibility for for our own behavior. Seeking to make amend with a person who was offended. Genuine apology. Listen, genuine apology opened the door of the possibility of forgiveness and reconciliation. Genuine apology. Our problem is not that we hesitate to admit anything. Our problem is that we are learning how to justify everything. We have excellent excuses for anything that we want to do. I don't know whether you remember one of the TV series that I watched a long time ago, Quincy MC. Do you remember that? Dr. Quincy is a medical examiner of the coroner's office in Los Angeles County. And He's working on a certain fact about suspicious death. In one of those episodes, there's a powerful dramatic scene in which Quincy confronts a doctor who made a terrible mistake and tried to cover up. Doctors stand up in front of Dr. Quincy saying, I'm so busy, man. I'm a busy man, I don't have the time to talk about this now. So if you will, please excuse me. And Dr. Quincy comes back with this penetrating response. Doctor, I don't have power to excuse you or what you have done. The question is, can you excuse yourself? Self-justification. When I look at my relationship with others, I also identify the problems that I'm trying to justify all the wrongdoings that I'm doing, trying to excuse myself. For genuine apology, to be accepted, we need to speak the language that convey sincerity. So I ask you, have you said, I am sorry? I am sorry? One of the famous popular music, uh, movie in 1970s, titled Love Story, that movie includes a famous line like this. Love means never having to say you are sorry. Do you agree with this statement? I don't. I believe that it's the kind of opposite of that. Love often means saying you are sorry and real love will include apology by the offender and forgiveness by the offended. That's love. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the good news is that the art of apology can be learned. We can learn. There's a famous book titled, All I Really Need to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten. Do you know that book? One of the things that this author was learned is that 
Say you are sorry when you hurt somebody. That's what we learn in the kindergarten. The first language of apology is uh, expressing regret or admitting. Most commonly, it's expressed in the three this in these three magic words. I am sorry. <coughs> but a lot of people using additional word after that. I am sorry, but. Adding this word, but, become, the apology become an act of blame. I am sorry, but. I really encourage you to not using the word, but, after I'm sorry. And also, when you say, I am sorry, be more specific. For example, when you apologize, you should say, I am sorry for such and such, in details, a little bit. In that way, the offended person that realized that, okay, this apology is sincere, right? The in details, that offended, be offended, people be able to understand, to make a connection of the true apology. One of the like, really moving story that I read, uh, written by Roy Angel, NL. This author told a beautiful story about a widow during the First World War. This widow lost her only son and her husband. She was especially bitter because her neighbor, who had five sons, lost none of them during World War I. The one night, while this woman's grief was so terribly severe, she had a dream. An angel stood before her and said, you might have your son back again for 10 minutes. What 10 minutes would you choose? Would you have him back as a little baby? A dirty-faced little boy? A schoolboy just started school? or students just uh, completing high school, or as the young soldier who marched off so bravely to war. Mother, this mother thought about it for a few minutes. In her dream, told the angel, she would, she would choose none of them, none of them. Let me have him back she said, when as a little boy, in a moment of anger, he doubled up his fist and shook them, in, shook them at me and said, I hate you, I hate you. Continued to address the angel, she said, in a little while, his anger kind of calmed down. And he came back to me. His dirty little face stained with the tears and put his arm around me saying, Mama, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I promise I'm never to be bad again. I love you with all my heart. This mom said, let me have him back then. The mother sobbed, I never loved him more than at the moment when he changed his attitude and came back to me. 
beautiful, isn't it? That was a power, power of sincere apology, which brings healing, forgiveness, and restoration of relationships. My brothers and sisters in Christ, sin is serious business, but God will help us to conquer our sin. Even more important, there is forgiveness. There is forgiveness. Total, complete, unlimited forgiveness was offered to us, available to all who repented. In 1 John chapter 9, 1, 9, verse 9 says, If we confess our sin, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is the same in our relationship, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We all are offenders in some ways. Some, when we offend others, it hurts our loved ones and relationships. So the apology language, sincere apology language is extremely important in the process of healing and restoration. In this Lenten journey, we are heading to Easter. I really hope and pray that you and I learn the language of apology and use them properly to restore our broken relationship and bring healing to us. Those three magic words. I am sorry. That magic word make a world of difference and healing begins with that word. God is pleased with us and we glorify in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Amazing God, we thank you for the message that you've given us. It's a simple three words, but it's really hard for us to say. In many times, God, many times we are not able to see ourselves. It's hard for us to admit what we are doing, wrongdoings. Help us, God, in this journey of Lenten season, help us to use the amazing word of apology properly so that our relationship, our broken relationship will be restored with your grace. Thank you, God. And help us to live out the word that we just received. I am sorry, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand for closing him?
came to us because our relationship was broken. God offer forgiveness and restoration. Let us use a pro proper apology. I am sorry. So that we can restore our relationship with God and with others. God the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.